Good afternoon and welcome to E.ON Innovation Days. My name is Stefan Håkansson. I work as responsible in E.ON for the solutions in industry and cities. Our solutions is all about sustainability and how we can decarbonize the society faster. Today and the next 40 minutes, we will be discussing what actually it means for industry in three different industry segments. What are the challenges and how can we embark in a faster and better way to, in the end, not only improve our business, but to get deeper into this overarching purpose. It is truly saving the world topic and uh, linking to the back of what happened the last year, the last two, three years, we see a fast movement in this area. How can we really embark on this fantastic momentum and make the best out of it. I have some great uh, participants joining me here today. Um, we have uh, Per Larsson coming from Rangsells, being the sustainability manager for Rangsells and the whole global area inside the recycling industry. Uh, we have Tobias Ostermann, who is responsible for procurement of uh, energy uh, uh, power and gas in the whole area for Heidelberg cement. And also on link, also want to welcome uh, Mr. Rainer Herring, who is responsible, the energy manager for the UPM group. Um, now, embarking on to the discussion and starting off, there is a, a expression that is coming hotter and more intense in all our industry today. It's about circular economy and circular flow of materials. When you look into the energy system of this, it's about using heat in a better on, in the better way, using residuals and becoming much more efficient in cities, but also in industries. What does actually circular sustainability or circular economy mean for you? And what are your challenges to achieve it? What are you doing right now? And what do you want to do more going forward to further speed up the sustainability journey you're on? Please uh, go ahead, uh, Per, and introduce what are you doing in Rang Sales? Thank you so much. What we're doing is that we are, in today's economy, we are a recycler. In our industry, we have, uh, have waste being brought to us from different companies and, and cities, and they say, please do something with it. We don't want it anymore. But what we're really doing now is to make sure that we can become a raw material producer and a detoxifier in a future circular economy. And that means that we, on element level, are developing solutions where we can recirculate back important resources. One example is phosphorus. And here we have now a collaboration in Germany with the company Gelsenwasser, where we'll together with them extract phosphorus from the sewage sludge on element level. Or another example is what we're doing in Estonia, where we're using carbon dioxide as an input to produce precipitated calcium carbonates. And that single project has the potential to reduce the climate emissions on a global level with 400 million tons of carbon dioxide, or eight times as much as Sweden as a nation emits to the climate every year. And why has it, is it possible? Because now, as exactly as like you said, things are happening. People want it to happen, and new value chains are created, so we see there's a market potential. And we do understand that in a circular economy, there's no waste. And to be honest, there is no waste already today. What we see is that we have just resources that are not sorted. So it's just how can we sort them? How can we extract the resources out of them? No waste and only resources. That's, that is truly a, a slogan that we heard a few times coming over and back in, again. And I know I know Tobias in Heidelberg Cement, you're also working on the same topic, but in a different industry segment. Um, please introduce to us how you see, see this issue. Yeah, thank you, Stefan. Um, yes, by our own interest, we are doing it uh, since many, many years, actually. And um, 
two ways, more or less, right? Um, the first way is that we use an increasing matter alternative fuels to, f uh, to feed our kilns, right? And the, in, in a second step, which is my vision uh, for the future of a cement plant uh, to be, uh, in a second step, this exhaust heat, um, which we use now internally for drying purposes and, and, and for raw materials and everything, this might be also become a very, very important and valuable um, commodity or, or resource for our neighbors, industrial neighbors, which have a huge demand on, on heat as well. So why not turning our waste heat into a commodity for them and make it therefore usable and by this reducing the primary heat uh, or the primary energy need on, uh, on, on a combined level, so to speak. Thank you very much for that, Tobias. Um, that links also really well into you, Rainer. Uh, pl please join us also from Link. Yeah, we're very keen also on, on hearing your reflection to this circularity and sustainability from, from the perspective of UPM. Yeah, thanks, Stefan. Uh, circularity and sustainability, let me start so. I think it's, it's, it's in our DNA. Uh, but uh, before I explain a little bit more, uh, let me say maybe two sentences uh, to UPM. Uh, UPM uh, is a Finnish, uh, Finland-based company with, with worldwide assets and activities. And, and our raw material is, uh, is coming from the forest, it's wood. Our traditional areas like timber, pulp and paper uh, uh, where I'm working for, for the paper industry. Uh, but as a company, we are in transformation uh, uh, of our business uh, to products from wood for the time beyond fossils. Uh, as for example, example, biochemicals, biodiesel and bio biomolecules. Coming back to circularity and sustainability, it's uh, uh, our, our aim since, since the late 60s of the last uh, century, uh, uh, this circularity, when you remember waste paper recovery, uh, we have developed this topic and, and, and recycling is, is more or less uh, uh, starting with, with paper recycling, which we are doing still now. Uh, our, our 2030 CO2 reduction target as a, as a, as a company uh, is uh, minus 65% uh, uh, against 2015. And uh, we, we see us ourselves on a good way to, to reach this target. Uh, the highest challenges uh, we have uh, there is mainly uh, in our sites outside Finland as uh, uh, the Scandinavian sites are uh, heavily, heavily based on biomass and hydropower and nuclear power generation. Uh, and, and, and there we have a significant challenge for mainly our sites here in Germany, which are uh, historically also based mostly on fossil gas. Nowadays, nowadays we already have uh, uh, this slogan, which, which uh, I, I heard just now, no waste. Uh, for example, we are operating paper mills which are feeded by close to uh, three quarters of a million tons of recovered paper. And everything what is leaving this mill uh, is uh, the same amount of new paper. All, all, other, all other things uh, uh, which, which, which are leaving the mill is, are also products. This is, this is what, what we understand on, on, on the circularity and, and on the sustainability in our business. Thank you very much for that, Reiner. Um, I'd like to play it back to, to Per. So you started with, uh, there is no waste. There's only resources that we can use. And then we hear Tobias and Reiner more or less saying the same thing from Heidelberg Cement and UPM. What, what are your reflections and what are your ideas of what, what should we actually do more and faster to be able to to overcome the hurdles we have right now, and um, and and uh, what kind of cooperation is missing for it to happen? I think, Stefan, that you're touching upon a very important part is that the ambitions is that the world would like to go circular, but the policies are not there. 
the policies are still linear. As an example, we see in Europe that almost all legislation say that it is the origin that determines if we can recycle it, recirculate it, not the quality. If it has been what is called waste today, it is banned. So there is a lot of legislations that need to be changed. Otherwise, I would say that, that it is very important to understand that the different methods that we will need to create those circular material flows will be different depending on what you would like to recirculate. Uh, like the, the potassium molecule. I can't sort it with medical uh, sorting. I need to have a way. And here, suddenly, incineration or, or thermal heating will be crucial mm -hmm. to get that molecule. And then, of course, society needs to accept that. And that, yes, staying with you a, a minute more, but that, that is clear. The policies is something that is reoccurring and that's being discussed in every single government and also in Brussels and how we need to land that. What is your reflection on what, what we as an industry should do apart from influencing the policies? What, what, what could we do more to, to have the impact today? We need to collaborate. We need to, f to create the value chain of the raw material. So we need to have the end consumer that will need the resource all the way back to us that can extract the resources. Eon, in this case, that can detoxify as, and, and concentrate the resource. Uh, and, and of course, many of the things that we have in our processes, and here we take how the rest of will able to use it in their way. So suddenly, I agree totally, uh, uh, there is no waste if we can find the ways where others need it as resources and input. That comes also over to you, Tobias, um, and also the Heidelberg cement. Uh, we need to collaborate more. Um, if we leave the policy aside, that also needs to, to embark on changes. What, what are you doing linking to the collaboration? What do you see uh, the next three to five years that could actually make a difference for you? Yeah, collaboration is uh, really key, right? So if you want to turn your waste into somebody else's commodity, you have to get to know each other, you have to rely on each other, you have to trust each other for many, many years, because um, especially if it comes to heat, you need pipeline systems, which are very capital intense to invest in, and this you will not have a payback, a decent payback within five years or so. So it's really going on long-term relationships, right? And um, I guess this is really key for um, for the circularity as such, but also I have to admit that our uh, our way of doing things must change. The, the mindset must change in the sense that we are not operating the cement plants as a kind of isolated island anymore and optimizing in a silo, uh, on a silo level, on a silo um, view for ourselves, all of our in and out streams. Um, so, yeah, this also needs a kind of mindset. But as of now, we, I see the tendency of, of, of all these external triggers, let's say, which are creating a pressure and key, uh, get keep um, things rolling, let's say. Right, so the organization, I would say, is, uh, is, is ready to do things in a different way than they have done it for the last yeah, decades, let's say. Do you feel that Heidelberg cement is under pressure on sustainability? Is, is there like a, a, a bad cement and a nice cement coming or, or how, how do you see that? As of now, my perception is we are all bad cement, right? Yeah. So as a, as a cement producer, um, we have a big problem in making the society aware that we are producing a, a good which is frequently asked, right? It is surrounding us everywhere. Um, modern life wouldn't be possible without it. And in the same time that we are part of the solution and not the problem, right? Because if we get to manage this circularity in a decent way and making this heat available, let's say, for, for, for other industries, Without us, they would be still in the position to burn fossil fuel in order to create the heat. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's kind of, yeah, get the publicity aware that we are the key to solve these uh, transition, right? I, uh, thanks a lot for that. And, and, and Reiner, also over to you, linking to this collaboration. But, but before jumping into that, just enlighten us, what are you actually 
doing to improve your efficiency and, and, uh, and embark on your sustainability area? Uh, what, what, what are the big challenges you're actually facing there, linking back to you have assets worldwide and, and reaching the 65%? What, what are you actually doing to get there? Yeah, very, very different actions. Uh, of, of course, it's, it's, it's very, very, very individual, uh, uh, depending, depending on the mill site, on, on the circumstances with, which we see on the mill site. And uh, things uh, uh, can, can, can start, for example, in, uh, in, in, in such, such a, a manner as we do uh, uh, this project uh, together with E.ON to de decarbonize uh, uh, the heat supply for one of our mills. Uh, uh, with a biomass boiler uh, uh, here in here in Germany, uh, another action can be uh, uh, electrification of heat generation. A big topic uh, will be uh, uh, the use, uh, the intelligent use of heat pumps uh, in combination uh, with our uh, waste heat streams. But I want I want to uh, underline that uh, what my two colleagues already said. And uh, with my words, uh, I think I think the time is over that we that we look that we have fences around our mills that we we look we look up above fence. I think we should not have fences anymore. Uh, no fence, no fence to 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 public. Uh, meaning we are we are in a lot of areas uh, uh, supplying district heating from from our from our waste heat. This is especially in, in, in Finland the case, but also here in Germany. And also when we look, uh, uh, we are some, somewhere in neighborhood with other companies, with, with uh, uh, big, big living areas. And what, what I see is that uh, uh, so far, everybody makes his own solution. Uh, uh, this might, this, this means following that uh, uh, two or three parties have to invest in their individual own solutions and three own solutions might be, might be individually uh, uh, the best for, for, for each of the individuals, but to find a solution, a common solution for all three. Uh, uh, means less investments and in a in lot of cases I would imagine uh, uh, also, also a, a higher efficiency of, uh, of, of, of this solution. So my motto is, uh, uh, let's have a look above the fence. In ideal case, uh, don't think in, within fences. This would speed up a lot. I, I, I really like that a lot. I take it directly into to my heart, this uh, fences and tear down the fences and op open the collaboration. Uh, you talked about different modules like heat pumps and, and PV and, and uh, different kinds of fuels getting in and also digitization to improve. Um, however, uh, then this kind of collaboration, how, how should we get there? And so UPM, paper industry, uh, we have uh, 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 linking to Heidelberg cement, which is really a, a core of the construction industry and society building in, in all over the world. And then we have Rang Sales, one of the most advanced and prominent players in the, in the recycle industry, uh, specific, specifically in the Nordics. Uh, what kind of things do you see that we can do jointly together? How, how, do, you get, how do you get input from the others that you haven't done before? What do we need to do to tear down the fences? And, and maybe, uh, Per, you would like to start. I believe that we touched upon the importance of trust. And uh, when we see what the public sector, though the, the public uh, think about how we can change the society, there is very low trust for the politicians. But what we see is that business leaders has a much higher trust uh, level. So I do believe that uh, the, the importance to, to, to raise down the barriers, make sure that we can open up these fences, and then it's up, up to the leaders, the CEOs, the management boards. They need to understand now it's not the short term anymore. We need to find ways to get new partnerships going. And that's exactly what we are doing at the moment. We are opening up doors to both upstream and downstream because that's the only way for us to survive. In a future circle economy, there's no need for waste management companies. So we need to become a raw material producer yeah. and the, the toxifier. Can, can and you give an example? 
an example of that? Yeah, we can do the example with the nitrogen solution that we have now put in the market, or about to put in the market. Here we collaborate with Alpha Laval on a global level to make sure that we can do that. And here we work with, with uh, wastewater treatment plants in Belgium, in, in Denmark, and here in Germany. But they have an ambition now to become resource plants. And then, of course, you need to change also policies. So here we join together with them to make sure that policymakers enable it at the same time as we put the innovations on the market. And, and what's your reflection when you hear this, uh, Tobias? Um, yeah, I mean, from my uh, operational experience, I would say, we talked about cooperation and how to connect things. This comes usually along with a higher degree of, um, of complexity, right? Heat, electricity, uh, steam, hydrogen, maybe oxygen, whatsoever. And all this linked together against moving market prices and, and everything on top the regulation pair, right? Because we are not uh, totally free, exactly. Uh, but all of this is very hard to communicate in, in also internally right and to convince people that this is the right thing to do so i know that communication is such a big word and and and, and it, it's it is used uh, plentifully right but i guess in this context it is really applicable that um, it is key to show the advantage again and again and again and explain and do internal um, works in um, yeah pushing people into, into this kind of uh, more forward uh, solution, more, more forward-oriented solution. So therefore, what also helps always, from my experience, is vivid examples. So if there would be a, a kind of communication platform which maybe shows this kind of industrial processes and how it was actually succeeded, done, um, this would be very, very helpful as well for, uh, for internal communications and... Um, changing the perception on such strange new things. So listen to Per saying, you know, you said wastewater treatment becoming resource plants. It's a perfect conclusion you're saying to be as about uh, how complexity is increasing with cooperation and, and really long lead times, it, it, it's complex. And, and then at the same time, we need trust. Reiner, what's your recipe? How should we solve this challenge with trust, increased cooperation, increased complexity? Because it all sounds to me slowing down and all what we need to do is speeding up. What, 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 what should we do? <laughs> Good question. Uh, uh, there is not, not a single answer, I, I think. Uh, I, I would add uh, one, one thing what, what, what is needed first. Uh, I think you have to believe in topics. And, and, and when you believe in topics, uh, then, then you, you can fight for topics and you convince people. I only, I only remember, for example, our, product, uh, our project we, we made with E.ON. It took some time and, and, and there have been uh, uh, doubts, I think, on, on, on both sides. But uh, on both sides, there have been also strong believers that this uh, makes sense. And, and, and when, when we did it uh, then, uh, after, after several discussions and negotiations and so on, nowadays we see it's, it's, it's fitting perfectly, perfectly in the landscape. And uh, I, think, I think we have, we have to come somehow in the doing mode. Uh, we, we, we tend a little bit or we tended a little bit uh, to, to discuss and to discuss and to discuss. Sometimes, sometimes you, have, you, have, you have to try and you have to do. Uh, this sounds strange when, because we talk in every, time, in, in every case about investments, may, maybe huge investments. But when I only look to the last five, six years, what, what developments have been taken place, and I, I, I strongly believe uh, uh, this development will not stop. I, I think it, it, it will speed up. Uh, when we wait until, until uh, this development has reached a certain level, uh, and, and then we create our solutions, I think it will, be, it will be not early enough. I don't want to talk about too late. And, and uh, talk, talking about uh, uh, what, what, what to do, I think, I think we also, when we have higher complexity in, in, in these future solutions, we have strongly uh, uh, 
to to utilize uh, the IT solutions. Uh, I think I think intelli intelligent optimization solutions are a must in in, in the future. That's that's uh, also a, a very clear topic. Uh, embracing digital, which is quite challenging in this, and practically, how do we actually do that? Um, we do have one question from the audience. Um, that is fitting very well into this topic. It, it spells out like this. Could you give us an example of a successful cross-industry collaboration? Cross-industry collaboration in the context of circular economy. Today we heard a lot about trust and mindset and brands. How does this mindset look like when you go into this successful cross-industry collaboration? The word is free. Who wants to go for it? Per. Uh, I have my favorite example, and here is when we can, in this case, take uh, hustle waste, incinerate it, concentrate resource, then suddenly we, we end up with potassium or other salts. Here we have a solution where we then, in the end, have a salt manufacturer that are selling the salts that now say, I don't want any virgin production anymore. I would like to have low carbon emitting circulate processes. So here, suddenly, the collaboration with, that we do together with E.ON up in Herbie Torp is a very good example, where we suddenly, with our technique, then can start producing the salts. And it goes back again, in the end, to the food, and then again, back to you, and then we have a complete circle. Yeah, that's, that's really good, reducing the primary usage of, of raw materials. And the very important part is the change is happening. The request now to get what has been a secondary resource before now suddenly becomes the primary resource. They don't want the virgin resources anymore. They don't want to dig it up. They, please, can we find it some, somewhere else instead? Tobias. Uh, oh, sorry, Reiner. Maybe, maybe uh, I, I, I agree with you, but... Uh, from a practical example, uh, uh, this sometimes also uh, uh, creates new competition. And uh, 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 talking talking to Tobias, for example, uh, we are we are somehow competitors in in uh, and, and you would not believe it, but uh, uh, we have we have as as the end of a lifetime of a fiber, which which we use seven times uh, a fiber to produce paper, paper, paper. And, and after seven seven times of use, uh, uh, the fiber is 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 too short uh, to be uh, uh, used for for paper production again. And the last use then is is the the incineration. And as a as a byproduct of this incineration, uh, we have we have some ash, which is mainly contenting uh, the fillers uh, of, of the paper, and which we we developed to a product a product which for example, can be used for, 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 for groundworks, for, for, for building streets and so on. Uh, uh, this, is, this is mainly or used to be mainly a, a waste. And to develop a waste to a product uh, uh, is, is a, a hurdy a way, I would say. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you, you create new competition because our competitor on this side is, is for example, the calc and cement, cement industry. And, 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 and therefore, we, we, we have to, 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 to think a little bit bigger in my point of view. Yeah, I, I think generally competition is a good thing. It's like how business models evolve and new markets evolve under the theme of also sustainability. But of course, uh, we need to have this openness uh, to not, not uh, uh, stop the development. And, and, and uh, yeah, to, to be asked, w w what's your reflection on this? My reflection on this is that it is very good to know that within all these companies, the same things going on and the same kind of mindset change might, uh, might take place as of now, right? Um, we have to be courageous. I'm totally with, with Rainer, right? So if we turn the business case upside down and inside out again and again and again, time is over for getting it done and therefore maybe we have to also um, do it a bit more yeah venture capital style in order to just risk it see how it works out and take this as a kind of first step into finding the right the right measurements the right most effective measurements and fitting measurements in order to tackle these 
these kind of challenges we are facing, and they are they are huge, right? So we better start start now. Um, going into a bit, picking up one more question uh, from the audience, and going into the uh, the complexity, because in the end, I I, I personally. I perceive the complexity as one of the biggest hurdles of slowing the development down. And, and the question was, uh, is uh, how do you embark with the stakeholders of the whole value chain? Um, so Heidelberg Cement, you're obviously supplying the building industry. Um, UPM, you, you're all supporting and supplying uh, uh, different papers and cartoons and, and packaging uh, and, and in, into the world in, in a very efficient way. And, and Rang Sales is delivering recycling solutions. So how do you embark with your stakeholders to make circular solutions fly? And, and uh, how do you work with the topic of making the lead time as short as possible? The word is free. Yeah. Please go ahead, Per. I think it's very important to share knowledge. And then suddenly someone raises his hand and said, I would like to do that. I would like to collaborate with you. And that is what happened the last three years. We are trying to really showcase what can happen if public procurement goes from today's liner way of doing it instead of doing it circular. We know that 20% of the carbon emissions in Sweden comes from what the, 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 the public sector are purchasing. But if they would go circular instead, they will reduce the carbon emissions with at least 10%, maybe all the way up to 20%. So, and they will share knowledge how to do it. And then we'll even, we even give diplomas to the best cities in Sweden that has t started to do that. And you know, every city councillor, they would like to have the diploma for they never get any gratitude. They always just disagree with each other. So suddenly someone comes and say, yeah, we're a good example. So highlighting best practice example outside of your company, make sure that they become the heroes and suddenly they will do the change. That's a very good example. I, I, they're very compelling for me as well. Uh, any addings from Reiner or Tobias on the topic? If I may, uh, Rainer, so um, for uh, speaking out of the experiences from this industrial heat project we are just running with the co your colleagues from E.ON uh, uh, um, for one of our plants, right? Early engagement is really key. So getting people on board as early as possible, right? And, uh, and explaining as well very detailed and, uh, and in a kind of open book style what we, what we are aiming to because this is really to build up trust in the very beginning, right? So if they have the suspicion that you are just doing it for your own interest, and not for the mutual benefit, then this whole thing becomes more and more uh, um, yeah, unlikely in the very end, I guess. And as well, searching for external parties which are supporting you. And in this case, and, and, and Pierre totally agree, uh, in this case, it is a city, right, which has a vivid interest in getting these things done because it would reduce uh, uh, the, 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 the primarily fuel use within the city area, and therefore they could claim kind of a, uh, a part of this benefit for their own climate protection uh, um, uh, goals, right? And then you really have them on board and you have like this kind of yeah. situation where everybody is really pulling in the same direction and not working again against each other. You find the direct motivation for each individual part, right? So, Reiner, uh, I, would, I would, I would uh, complete it uh, and, and I would say we have to bring different worlds together. We have to bring together the world of industry. The thinking and the approach of the industry is not uh, the same as, for example, uh, I call it the former utility companies, uh, uh, Stefan, like 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 Eon. I would see, and also uh, not not uh, the same thinking as, for example, some some Stadtwerke, meaning municipal companies and so on. And as the approaches uh, and, and, and the targets are, are, are not aligned, it's, it's the challenge to bring these thinkings together. And when you have some, 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 some uh, similarities uh, uh, which, 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 which can grow, this is the starting point for, for, for developing successful projects in my point of view. Thanks, Rainer. I, I, I like to also uh, give my reflections into what, what I hear you also say. I, I find it's really exciting to, to understand how you are working in each part of the industry and also how we in E.ON is, is working on this topic. We, 
we truly see recycling of materials as one of the core part of building the society for the future. One example we have is how we take the residual heat from a big steel uh, producer and, and actually have that as an input to a brewery. And this brewery, in the beginning of next year, will produce the first beer, totally CO2-free, in its production. I think this kind of branding and talking will help changing the mindset going forward. Unfortunately, it took more than five years to conclude the solution because it's very complicated about establishing the trust, uh, establishing the business model, and establishing the understanding what each solution needs. So, and, and what I'm working on a lot in, in the line of fields is how can we, as you said, Reiner, remove the fences, show, show how it looks like under the bathrobe, what, what do we actually have with our business? How can we help our, each other whatever crowdfunding or ideas of open platforms and Linux, just to get everybody visibly and transparently involved and jointly embark on the, on the journey going forward. I really like the comments uh, you, you said, Per, about making, uh, making the waste water treatment company into resource plants. One of our solutions is to actually take the waste water in Berlin, going under the streets, which is actually 10 degrees warmer than normal water. And that 10 degrees we utilize with heat pumps to actually make heating and cooling in, in, the, in parts of the city in Berlin. That kind of solutions of hunting down the residuals, I'm convinced we will really find a way forward. We need uh, regulation and policies, but we also need to show the way. And therefore I'm very engaged and, and happy that we are having this meeting today, Innovation Days because the true innovation that we need to embark on now is cooperation. Can we cooperate with all of our knowledge? We will speed decarbonization up very fast. Few last reflections, a minute each. Uh, please go ahead, Reiner, and, and what, what do you reflect on when you hear this discussion and how, what do you take with you and what are you doing later? Yeah, my, my, let's say, learning uh, is, is that, that not only we as paper industry, we are thinking about or we are, we are living in, in, in this environment, uh, in, in this circularity and, and, this, and this sustainability. This is a topic uh, for, for, for all the companies and also for the two uh, in, in involved colleagues. Uh, what, what I take with me uh, is uh, uh, that uh, uh, I, th I think uh, uh, these companies which are, are developing uh, uh, this, this topic, circularity and sustainability, uh, first and 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 uh, in, 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 in a big in, in, in a big manner, they will be successful, because uh, these these companies. Are, are, I, I, I see I see the the growing need or, or, or the wishes of the customers. To have sustainable products, and I see I see the, the uh, readiness of, 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 of people to think about uh, uh, circular circularity, and uh, uh, therefore, for, for, for me for me uh, it's uh, crucial uh, uh, to to uh, continue continue uh, working on this topic. So the transparency and cooperation uh, yeah. to be us. Yeah, uh, it also, as I said, it also encouraged me pretty much that we are all thinking the same way and, and this is, uh, seems to be at least uh, um, not the totally wrong, <laughs> wrong way, right, uh, I'm aiming to. So what my uh, takeaway is and what I will do uh, if I'm back in the office uh, by tomorrow, being courageous as possible, right, and being persistent as well internally to push this new and creative and to some it might, uh, it might feel very fancy and very odd, but pushing these ideas um, in, in, in order to, yeah, to tackle this big issue as best as possible. I, I like that, the personal commitment in the office uh, already on, on uh, tomorrow. Uh, Pat. Stefan, I will take you on your words. We need to showcase that is the possible are possible. Uh, we are now going to the COP26 conference and showcasing many, value chains to showcase for the policymakers, 
for other companies that it's possible to do this. And this is also an invitation to you. Do you want to collaborate with us? We have an open door, and we would like to work with anyone that has an interest to create those circular flows going forward. And of course, on Monday morning, I will call all three of you to make sure how can we work together in the future. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, first, Rainer Herring from, from UPM, Tobias Ostermann from uh, Heidelberg Cement, and Per Larsson from Rang Sales. My name is Stefan Håkansson, and uh, I look forward to see you all going into this cooperation mode and really changing the speed of the sustainability transition we're in. Goodbye.